Afternoon, dear students. Today we'll discuss physiology of pathophysiology, in fact, of circulatory shock. Now, what is circulatory shock? Basically, shocks are of various types. You can have a electric shock, which we are having after getting in con contact with little current. Spinal shock, when there is a damage to the higher centers in the brain. And now, this circulatory shock, as the name indicates, there is a some problem with the circulation. And the main problem is inadequate tissue for perfusion. So circulation is decreased in, in a, to the extent that tissue are deprived of the perfusion or a blood, leading to low flow, little amount of oxygen into the organ, and too little nutrients delivered to the cell tissues, leading to deprivation of basically oxygen and nutrients. And if continues, they can be cell death. That is called as a necrosis. So circulatory shock is basically because of poor circulation leading to in inadequate tissue perfusion. Now in this you can have a clear idea whether circulation if you just recall in our regulation blood pressure we have seen that this is the main organ which is pumping the blood that is heart which is pumping in the circulation and this is the our circulation which major circulation uh, where it is a closed circuit. Now there can be problem in the inadequate circulation because of problem either in the this part that is a heart especially the left heart which is pumping to the systemic circulation or there can be problem in the vessel itself especially the vein is returned to the heart if it is reduced we will have a reduced cardiac output and if the pumping is reduced again we will have a poor cardiac output so ultimately main problem here is a lower cardiac output but in some conditions of shock we can have higher cardiac output also so basic causes are basically classified based on the uh, part which is affected most common that is a cardiogenic shock in which the heart is somewhere abnormal this, so there is problem in the pumping mechanism of the heart second it can be simply low venous return shock now low venous return can be because of so many reasons it can be simply because of hypovolemia which can be because of uh, dehydration increased vomiting diarrhea neurogenic shock which is basically due to uh, new, uh, increased vascular capacity means suddenly there is a vasodilatation in the blood vessels leading to increased uh, capacitance of the veins and leading to decreased venous return to the heart or it can be anaphylactic shock which is due to drug reactions antigen antibody reaction again in this condition we can have vasodilatation and shock and other one which is called as a septic shock due to severe bacterial infection entering in the blood so these are the some of the common causes of shock ultimately there is a inadequate tissue perfusion now what happens once there is an inadequate tissue perfusion all the first negative feedback control mechanism will come into activation to rescue the body so attempt to return the cardiac output back to the normal and arterial blood pressure back to the normal so this is the main thing which is to be done so sympathetic reflex activated within 30 seconds to a minute after the hemorrhage so these are called as compensatory mechanism or compensated shock so initially when a, whenever there is a decreased tissue perfusion body will try to re maintain back the perfusion by increasing the cardiac output by increasing the blood pressure and uh, whatever reflex mechanism by vasoconstriction blood flow will be restored back to the normal so in this mechanism will come into action is uh, if you what we have studied during blood pressure regulation that is a baroreceptor mechanism will get activated and if the blood loss is very severe we may have CNS ischemic response coming into action stress relaxation angiotensin released by the kidneys leading to activation of renin angiotensin mechanism then from the posterior pituitary vasopressin hormone is released in response to decreased blood volume vasoconstriction due to angiotensin and other things and water retention by the kidney ultimately all will try to increase tissue perfusion by increasing the blood volume and increasing the blood pressure so these are called as the compensatory mechanisms carried out of the body also it is called as a first phase or non progressive phase of uh, shock so it lasts for 10 minutes to 1 hour 
till as i mentioned you medical rescue is there and if you are supplying the body fluid or plasma or the bl blood then the person will come back immediately so it is a non progressive stage from which easily we can bring the person back to the normality but if medical attention is not sick in time as i mentioned it's a golden window period is there if in window period is lost we can we can the patient can go in a reverse way that is a vicious cycle cardiac depression will lead to decrease in blood pressure which will lead to again decrease coronary blood flow this decreased blood flow will lead to heart weakens weakening of the heart as the blood supply to the heart is decreased heart will become again weak which will further lead to decrease in blood pressure so this now the heart number the heart has entered in a vicious cycle further decrease in blood pressure further decrease coronary flow further so this will lead to a positive feedback cycle develops which is called as a vicious cycle and this is called as a progressive shock now the patient is entering in the danger phase now so initially it was a non progressive phase from which rescue was quite possible now the patient has entered in a progressive phase where now we have to be very desperate in the rescue operation and we will have to bring the patient back to the normal by all possible means but if if again medical attention is not sick the patient will go in vasomotor failure circulatory arrest to the brain and in first 4 to 8 minutes you know the response is worked but at the end of the 10 to 15 minutes vasomotor center depressed so transfusion or other therapies incapable of saving the life so it is called as a irreversible shock the person has entered in the third stage which is very dangerous from here rescue is very much impossible patient can go in brain death and remain for the few days also so this are this is the third and dangerous stage of shock which we label as irreversible shock so these are the stages which have we have enumerated just now first is a non progressive stages in which all the compensatory mechanisms are coming to action for the rescue body on its own tries its best and if blood loss was less patient may get back to the normal without any external support but we have to support the patient best try so that he should not go in the second phase that is a progressive stage once the patient has entered in the progressive stage we have to be very fast in the medical treatment and if treatment is given in time patient will come back to the non progressive stage but if in this stage patient is not given much attention this golden window period goes the patient will go in irreversible stage so these are the three stages of circulatory shock non progressive stage which is a compensatory phase progressive stage and the last that is irreversible stage now physiological basis of treatment now it depends again on type of shock so we are supplying the treatment based on this so it is very important to diagnose what is the type of shock whether it is a neurogenic shock whether it is a cardiac shock or whether there is because of low volume so if it is because of suppose decreased blood volume for example in severe burns where purely plasma is lost so in this condition we supply the plasma we supply the iv fluids we don't give in this condition whole blood because the blood will go further concentrated so in this plasma is lost basically so we are giving the plasma in cardiogenic shock we have to take care of the heart let's see what is the problem it is, if it is because of angina or myocardial infarction we have to remove the block immediately we have to give the uh, uh, anticoagulants to remove the blocks in the cardiac vessel and if uh, emergency is there we may have to go for angiography and for the angioplasty and because unless until heart muscle is restored with the blood supply heart will not work even when if cardiac muscle is not working we cannot bring the patient back to the normal so it is important so hypovolemic shock is treated mainly by the supplying the volume like in severe burn we are supplying the plasma if it is excess sweating we are giving normal saline or severe diarrhea vomiting again we are supplying this uh, normal saline only and if excess loss from fluid by the kidneys again that is given and if there is a hemorrhage especially after a trauma by accident then we are giving whole blood transfusion is given to bring the blood volume back to the normal so treatment of all this will depend on what type of damage is there so all we need a separate attention so 
special main thing will be to replenish the fluid whatever is lost if the loss is blood we are giving whole blood if loss is plasma we are giving the plasma if it is simply the uh, uh, blood uh, extra fluid is lost like in sweating and vomiting we are supplying simply the uh, ringer lactate or normal sinus supply now based on again types of shock we have to give treatment if it is a neurogenic shock which is basically due to sudden loss of vasomotor tone which can be because of damage to the spinal cord or in case of deep general anesthesia many times it can happen or in case of spinal anesthesia because of damage to the spinal cord we can have this or brain damage in accident specially the patient can go in a neurogenic shock in that condition treatment is basically anticholinergics as the we want to bring the uh, vessel tone back to the normal anticholinergics are given and it is brought back to the normality and if it is an anaphylactic shock due to some drug reaction for example penicillin is given immediately patient gets a reaction so it is basically an antigen antibody reaction allergic reaction basically release of so many substances from the vesicles and mast cells they are releasing histamine or histamalic substances now in this condition this leads to vasodilatation so and venous certain decreases there is a decrease in blood pressure so here treatment is basically steroids we are suppressing the immunity immediately because there is no infection here this is basically immune response is there so steroids are given immediately patient will be rescued back to the normal so it's very very important that what is the cause of shock neurogenic shock and of shock treatment is totally different as compared to the cardiogenic shock so you have to diagnose the condition so here you can have a clear cut history in anaphylactic shock whether the patient has taken any medicines especially by the injections or by orally or any insect bite is there so if there is any, any history you have to suspect a uh, anaphylactic shock and if you suspect any trauma or uh, anesthesia that time you know shock can be expected and if in the, in the trauma blood loss was there then you can expect a circulatory shock similarly septic shock it is commonly uh, happens after severe bacterial infection because of entry of toxins in the blood so that is not in the blood poisoning bacterial infection widely disseminated uh, high metabolic rate and vasodilatation is there in this condition treatment will be basically antibiotics so especially if the, there is history of uh, infection or fever one or two days back and suddenly patient becomes very toxic and uh, there is a high lymphocyte count uh, or wbc count will increase so you have to diagnose the condition and based on that antibiotics are given specially uh, intravenous antibiotics are given so that we have to control the infection at the earliest so this is the treatment of septic shock but ultimately in all of this there is a decrease venous return to the heart leading to decrease cardiac output and decrease tissue perfusion and in some condition like this there is increased cardiac output and reason of shock is basically high metabolic rate there is increased consumption so there is a relative deficiency of the blood compared to the requirement so now treatment of all four is totally different so we have to treat them according to the cause so here we are completing the different types of circulatory shock thank you